Hey everyone, it's Jared here, and today I wanna to talk about some overused drum fills. And you might be wondering, why should I watch a lesson to learn some overused drum fills? And here's the reason. It's because this is what I would have wanted when I was first starting. I was 15 when I first started. When I was 17, I got the opportunity to play um, with a band called Doxa. We were playing in church and we played at a weekly event and we did a live recording. We wanted to do a live recording to kind of get the feel for all the people in the, the church. And I listened back afterwards and I was just like shaking my head. It's like every fill was the same. It was this. Every fill started with And so naturally the entire album just sounds like the drummer only knew one fill and so, and so that's what I'm trying to avoid um, and I try and learn different combinations and you can do a lot with one pattern so if I just did different stuff with that same pattern I could have got a lot more mileage out of it but I chose to do snare high tom and that's how everything started and and so hopefully by watching this lesson and kind of you know being aware of some of this stuff you can kind of check yourself and listen back to some of your recordings and be like are you repeating vocabulary too much it's like if i was talking to you and i said the same word all the time and many people will say um a lot when they're talking on videos and so I try and not do that but occasionally I do it and many people will say the word so very much or they'll say specific words and you'll start to pick up on it and it's like why does that guy do that why is that why is she doing that it doesn't I don't like that it sounds funny and drumming I think is the same it's like there's identifiable vocabulary that will become annoying after people start listening to your drumming more and more and for me I like to make my drumming as interesting as possible. And I'm not saying I'm the most interesting drummer, I'm just saying I have aspirations, I have goals, and I don't know, I think you might too. And so let's talk about some of this stuff. Now the, the first fill is the fill we all learned, and I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this one, but this is the around the world fill. Now if you are a drummer who's just playing this fill all the time, what can you actually do? You're like, what's your right, I know, that's all I know. Well, I would suggest start using that pattern or the sticking but just move it around different places instead of playing everything in groups of four play things in groups of two going from four to a group of two same exact amount of notes but listen to the difference in sound And you could further expand on that and do groups of two on more stuff. You could do groups of one. You could do many, many different accented patterns. But if you know how to do right, left, and you can keep up with whatever tempo you're playing at, the sky is the limit on how many different combinations you can come up with. So experiment with more stuff, and hopefully you can come up with some new sounding fills. The next fill I want to talk about is the Pat Boone Debbie Boone. Pat Boone, Debbie Boone is a fill that starts on the count of three. So it goes three and four E N. And I think it's called Pat Boone, Debbie Boone because that's how it sounds. Pat Boone, Debbie Boone. Now, like me, you might be playing this fill all the time. I actually started this fill on count one. So I would go. So I was, I was always starting on count one. You might be different, but for me, I'd like to change it up somehow. So one thing I like to do is add a drag going into the snare. The 
reason it's an overused fill is because it is very, very effective. We have lessons on the five most effective drum fills or drum fills that work. We've done so many of these lessons and that fill makes it in every time. So there is a reason it's overused and I'm not saying to stop using it. I'm saying to let, try and explore new ideas. That's it. The next thing I want to talk about is the famous six stroke roll. Now I'm not dogging on the six stroke roll. I use this all the time. Okay, listen to any of my Instagram videos or anything and you're just going to see six stroke rolls everywhere. I would say it's more this application that's overused by myself and by many, many other drummers. And it just works so freaking well. But if you're doing that fill all the time for your trash can endings, or if you're doing that fill all the time in the band, it's gonna start becoming a little bit annoying. So I'd recommend that you try different stuff. So what you could try and do differently is you can try and keep more of the accents on the drums and sparsely add in some stuff on the toms. adding a few doubles there on some, on some of the accents and stuff like that but just have some fun with it and just explore around the kit more to kind of find some new patterns and some new things that'll work differently. Also I'd encourage you to practice going in from the six stroke roll to the five stroke roll to the seven to creating different combinations using your rudiments because it's going to open up new doors for you. Okay so that's one thing I'd encourage you to try. The next one is a fun one. I remember when I first learned this this is called the Hertha. I think it's the Hertha, Hertha, it hurt. There's so many dad jokes in there, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave those for the comments section below because um, the more da dad jokes you have for Pat Boone, Debbie Boone, we're talking about the Hertha, we're talking about six stroke roll uh, around the world, there's gotta, be, there's gotta be a bunch of jokes there. But this Hertha is essentially two notes of whatever value followed by two notes, double the value, played as single stroke rolls. That's essentially the herda. So in this case, I've written it as two 16th notes followed by two 32nd notes. You could also do two eighth note triplets followed by two 16th note triplets. You could do two quarter notes followed by two eighth notes, okay? And it's played as a single stroke roll. Now, I first heard this fill played by Carter Beaufort back in the day when it wasn't being overused. And a lot of those, um, those older school drummers, drummers of the 80s, 90s, and much, much before then, they were using this stuff. And now it's come on the internet and everyone's doing their total abomination there at the end, but you get what I'm saying, right? The herd of Phil. If my drum set was a dish of food, the Rototoms would be the hero of the dish. Would they not? Hot dang. Okay, the last fill is the blushta. Blushta? 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 What is it? Blushta. <laughs> so I believe it's called the blushta because that's how it sounds. Blushta, 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 right? <laughs> You're blushting on the kit. Um, is blushting a verb or a noun? So the thing with this fill is if you're not currently overusing it, it's probably because you don't know it or you can't play it that well. And if you can play it that well, it becomes very, very addicting, okay? It's, this, is like, this is like substance abuse on the drums, which is no joking matter. It's, uh, it almost becomes one of those things where it's like, you can't stop playing it because it sounds so amazing. We just did a lesson with Greg Bissonette and he was playing the blushta and his blushtas are so like thick and greasy and they're so cool sounding. Uh, so many other drummers play their own kind of 
version of it and they'll add bass drum in weird places. <laughs> You can just get a really lazy sounding blush to butt. I love just playing it around the kit. A little bit of double blushness there. But so those are, my, those are my five most overused fills, and I'm hoping that this is a controversial topic. I'm hoping some of you disagree with me, some of you agree with me, so let's, let's get those comments down below and let's start talking about what vocabulary that we as drummers are overusing. What are we just like hammering to death and how can we get out of that rut? How can we start playing something different? How can we innovate ourselves? Obviously, the point is to play a part that fits the music but the part that fits the music is completely subjective to the person creating the part that fits the music. And so if someone thinks a blush stuff fits, great, no problem, and that might sound good. But if everyone starts thinking a blush stuff fits and everyone starts playing them, we're all gonna be becoming very fatigued with that sort of sound and that sort of lick. That's just the way things go. And so I'd encourage you to start thinking of other ways that you can orchestrate some of this, thinking how you can use the stickings in different ways, because that's what it's all about. It's all about exploration, it's all about innovation, and it's all about pushing ourselves to, to do better, right? And so definitely leave me a comment below. I'm, I'm gonna be really, really following this one. It's, it's gonna be a fun discussion, but thank you all so much for watching. If you are interested in learning more about drum fills, I just launched my four weeks to drum fills course. The link is right below this video. I talk about some of these topics, although I try and, uh, the goal of that was to try and get you to stop playing the same licks over and over again. So I'm showing you some new things that I'm exploring right now that I think you're absolutely gonna love. So definitely check out that course if you can. I'd love to see you in there. Otherwise, I will see you in the next lesson. Cheers.